the term broken beat is a concept more than a sound or a style. The difference is just the technology that we use to sort of make the music now, I guess. Broken for me is not compromising to the norm. It's still growing, still rising. It's 10 years now. <laughs> At the end of the second millennium, in a very remote galaxy, the planets started to dance, then got closer. A huge musical bang took place, and a meteorite was ejected. It crossed several galaxies and made its way towards Earth. The mysterious asteroid ended up by crossing the Earth's atmosphere and crashed onto a wasteland in the center of West London. The meteorite's heart contained the magneto, a powerful magnet able to send out waves across the universe. Guided by the magneto waves, a spaceship left the musical galaxy and headed towards the solar system. On board was the Captain IG Culture, Major Afronaut, and his battalion named the Bugs in the Attic, as well as the special agents for Hero. They were all determined to explore new musical territory. Following a long journey across different musical galaxies, IG Culture, Afronaut, and the Four Hero became the Broken Beat Pioneers. Afronaut and IG Culture know each other well. I saw him like, begging on the street one day, and I thought I was in that. <laughs> 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 Come and help me out. <laughs> we know each other in and out. We even know the darkness of each other as well. So we're like bros, you know? This is like family. Yeah. He's my big sister. <laughs> <laughs> and he's my little sister. <laughs> yeah, he's <like> a sister. <laughs> Paul Hero is this futuristic thing, right? Mm -hmm. Then you have the bugs, which is some kind of space virus, it's you like know? A well, if you check it, it is kind of like a virus. Uh -huh. You know, on a microscopic level, you know, the virus could be a meteorite. Okay. On an anti level. On an anti level, yeah. On an anti. Art rock is a meteorite. Okay. See? So, you get me? You get my meaning? And NSM is a whole whole world, mate. It's a planet. A whole planet. Just gassing. Gassing. <laughs> <laughs> a gaseous planet. <laughs> The goal is to reach the city. One of the Magneto allies was Giles Peterson, a DJ world famous for the quality and the eclecticism of his musical taste. Giles has been hosting for several years the worldwide show on the BBC, which has contributed to making a name for the vibrations of Broken Beat. The thing about Broken Beat is that, I mean, first of all, I don't think they like to use the term, the guys who invented it. Um, so I try not to use the word Broken Beat because I don't want to annoy people. Um, so it's kind of changed its name in different ways from West London to Brock. I've never really liked calling it Broken Beat, but only because it is such a wide spectrum within the music of tempos and, and, and vibes. You know, it, sometimes it can be quite dark and sometimes it can be quite happy and live. The term Broken Beat is a concept more than a sound or a style. It's an approach to making music. It's about breaking the rules. If you don't like rude words, then please turn off your radio. You're listening to the one and only Giles Peterson. Oh! Broken Beat is something that people kind of know that it definitely is highly concentrated and created very well in West London. West London's always had a lot of um, influence, actually, in in a certain kind of of, 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 of black music. Um, you know, going back to groups like the Brand New Heavies, um, Four Hero, um, Jamiroquai.
there's a lot of different cultures here. You got Portuguese, you got Moroccan, you got black, you got white, you got, and everybody really mixes up over here. It's London, it's a very musical part of London. It's a lot of, uh, hopefully it will always be a place where there's lots of musicians and lots of creativity. The combination of white bohemian middle class with a kind of energetic, um, at times put upon immigrant community has creates a kind of useful um, edginess and creativity. This place has just been always like an explosion of art. Broken Beat is just the most recent of a, a long line of uh, musical movements which have somehow taken root here. To me, it's just a continuation of what's been happening um, as part of a sort of, you know, it's, to me it's acid jazz, really. I mean, they all hate that. You've mentioned this dirty word, acid jazz, man. <laughs> it's not just banging some beats together and just dressing up in a suit and looking cool. No, man. IG, he was part of many groups. He worked with the Young Disciples. Had many groups before before he did New Sector Movement. Look, respect due to you know the the bands of the time, Brand New Heavies and Jamiroquai and Young Disciples and stuff. But you know that was there. With Broken Beat, um, you've you've got a gang of guys, um, a lot of which come from West London, a lot of which come out of the Reinforced Camp, which is really the drum and bass scene. Benji B, the DJ, has discovered the power of broken beat after playing lots of hip hop and drum and bass. In drum and bass, right? This is the kind of record that's interesting to me. When a scene becomes homogenized into just wanting that sound, I and mean, when you can't go out and hear that kind of breaks, you know, or you can't go and hear that kind of polyrhythm in the music, you can't go and hear that thing that I'm talking about, which is, it is basically programming, it is basically breaks, you know, um, like there's space for all of those records, but when it becomes homogenized, it becomes less interesting. And the thing that's exciting to me about Broken Beat, for want of a better description, is that that music is not homogenized into one thing hip hop, jungle, drum and bass, and house. You know, there's, it's, a, it's a beautiful marriage of all of those things. Domu, for example. You know, Domu's drum and bass, straight. You know, you hear that in his programming. Domu joined Broken Beat Galaxy after he was introduced to the Magneto Force on the label of drum and bass, Reinforced, founded in 1989 by the Four Hero. If you listen to lots of drum and bass records on the wrong speed, it, it could sound like a broken beat record, you know, it's just basically slowing down the whole thing so you've got more space and more scope to, to add feeling and to, to experiment, really. So, you could sort of say this is a typically broken beat, broken rhythm. Uh, it's made up of, um, you see the elements in here, which kind of are the kicks and the hats and the snares. Also underneath this, there's running a break. Add bass line. You know, it's kind of quite a, a perverse groove to it. But the thing that actually took me the longest amount of time on this is the roads. one chord at a time. Whereas the Broken Beat forces were very active in West London, the Magneto wave spread all around the planet and attracted many musicians throughout the world under the spell of the Broken Vibes. playing a lot of jazz, um, funk, hip-hop, Afrobeat, all sorts of stuff in New Zealand. And then coming here and finding a community who had all this, they, they were all into the same stuff, you know, jazz, soul, Latin music, drum and bass, hip-hop, house, 
but they weren't making it. You know, they're making a whole other thing. And for me, just to 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 come across that kind of community, it, it was really inspiring. I mean, that's that's what it was. Yeah. As a as a player, I kind of deconstructed what I'd learned about jazz through through learning more about broken and production. I'll build a beat on the MPC on the freestyle sessions and just you know build a, improvise a beat, improvise some bass parts and keyboard parts and and we'll just extend the composition. And to me, that's totally jazz. That's the MPC 3000 by Akai, Roger Lynn. It's a drum machine and sampler, so, you know, basically you, you get your sounds in there. Just tap on the tempo. put any samples in there, like I've done tracks where I'll have samples of different instruments in there. And then, um, like play some bass or something with it. With it. Have the rows down there as well. music comes alive is when it is played live. You know, the studio is like a, it's a, it's like taking a photograph of something or a, or a video, you know, that's one thing. But to be there when it's actually happening is a whole other thing. That's what I do love about the whole sequencing thing is you catch an idea and you can throw it down straight away. And, I love, for me, I love the marriage of technology and, and organic music, so um, that's, that's where I'm at at the moment. Sinbad, the Paris musician, was also attracted by the magneto waves. Back in the days, I was playing saxophone, hanging around in jazz clubs and also promoting jungle and drum and bass parties. That's how I met a lot of drum and bass DJs who told me, hey man, come and see what's happening in London. So I came with my backpack and my sack, and eventually I stayed. It's been 10 years now. I was doing recording sessions, playing keyboards in the studio next door. And that's how I met Mark Force. The piece on which Mark Force and Simbad are working is a good example of the broken beat creation's state of mind, for which the collaborations are numerous and often informal. This is the first track that we started with Blue. It's called um, Boat Race. So um, I'm basically going to load up the original track this is before even Sinbad come in. This is, this is the first session that I've done with her. Basically, we, we loaded up the a cappella and we just played a little beat over the top, which was this beat. And then we started adding in... It's probably the cool, the next one, eh? Yeah, yeah. Test it. <laughs> Work. Friday yeah. night, no, it's Friday night. Yeah, I'm supposed to be going out raving. I ain't got no child. I can go out party. You know what I'm saying? Friday night in the studio. <laughs> ain't no raving for us, though. Well, I'm, I'm in blue through some of my friends. I came back from Florida. I've been living there for four years. She's grown up around this area. She's basically from around the corner from the studio. And I went out, I went raving. I was out all night raving. Went out with some strangers. So she's had a good night out with my friends. They've looked after her. Ended up with these with these cool guys that are like friends of my cousins. And one of them, and it was like something like eight o'clock in the morning. And one of them said, oh, I know some guys, they have a studio down the road. Well, I was getting phone calls from about eight o'clock in the morning, but I ignored them. Cause I'm like, who's phoning up at eight o'clock in the morning? And um. Then my friend's like, oh, I'm with this girl. Uh, uh, we've been out all night and she's been singing to me. She's really good. And I was feeling really good. I was like, yeah, I'd love to go to a studio right now. I want to go and write something now. So I was going to get her to sing down the phone to me. So I started talking to her and she goes, oh, I'm blue. And I said, what blue that done Red Alert with Basement Jack? She's like, yeah, 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 yeah. She's like, oh, I haven't been in the studio for four years. I just want to make a track today. And I'm here 
working with the bugs and a few other people in this little studio. But it's a feeling I can touch. Believe it's hard. I won't be complaining. I'm the only one that's staying in here. I'm the only chick. Now you should push it back a whole bar from what it was. When I've met up with these guys, they're friends with, with their, some more people that are in their crew I used to work with when I was at school. Do you know what I mean? I used to sing with them, go over to their house. Gus, those guys that you met doing the walls and Bunny outside. I used to go over here to his house at lunchtime at school and we and sing in his house. You know, so there's like, I really feel like a strong family connection, which is exactly what I was looking for. The Broken Beat family loves to meet during the jazz refresh evenings of Mau Mau Cafe. It's a total family. It literally is a West London family. You know, when people talk about it, everyone's connected, everyone works together, everyone's up inside each other's house eating food, whatever. It's, it's literally like that. When I first met Bugs guys, we smoked. Hey. You know, so we chatted and we smoked so for like a whole day. And then, you know, we came back next week and we made music. Whenever there's a movement, it's generally a bunch of friends who, who just, you know, motivate each other to um, keep pushing each other to competing against each other to just to drop the next piece. I knew IG for a long time, but IG was part of a group called Dodge City and he was making hip hop. IG was rapping and sampling and making hip hop. Like myself, his progression went straight into Broken, where mine stayed in hip hop, but I made Broken as well. I, I go into both worlds, but it's a friendship thing. The Saga Center, mothership of the Broken Beat Forces, landed in the heart of West London, in the waste ground, just near the Magneto. Right, my name is Daz IQ from Bugs in the Attic, and now we're right here in the center of everything to do with our music. Here, right here, is are the Bugs, with Bugs in the Attic Studios right here, also, IG Culture's here, and also our distribution for your music, our distributors are right here. This is like right here on Kenton Road, right in the center of Notting Hill, where Notting Hill um, Carnival is also happening. You know, this is like, in terms of music, this is the place. This old, let me tell you a little history about this building, Saga Center, it's called the Saga Center. This used to be the building where Children Records, the legendary record, reggae record label used to be. Let's make some moves now. Oh no, the cameraman can catch up. There's a number of other studios here, which I don't even know who's here. But uh, Boris Owen used to be here as well. He's the, the famous like house, house and hardcore label. I've got, to, I've got to finish this, man. I've been trying to do it for two days. I'm always near the end. I can't concentrate, please. <clears throat> Sorry, buddy. Really Fuck's sake. Respect to the selector. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We'll see you later. I, yeah. thunder, yeah. um, I just spoke to Yodin. And, yeah? You just spoke to Yodin? Yeah. Apparently, you still be doing Yodin in the final jazz and all that. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Lab. Mm. Yeah, this is IG Culture's studio. It's open. And he's having a meeting here. So we won't be safe too long. <laughs> and 
Yeah. We are now plotting and planning for Miami right now. So. World domination. Well, actually, this is the part of our world domination, so dominatrix. So, watch out, co op's gonna be taken over. Let me go to Goya Music, yes? Goya Music, I'll explain to you now where we're gonna go to next. Goya Music is our distribution that deals with the music that we make. It's so a to be good quality, soulful house stuff, and uh, other good, other good genres of music, you know, the joints, you know, the hip hop, and all that. But it's got all the good quality stuff. And that without them, our music wouldn't have got what can't, wouldn't be heard worldwide. Now, this is outside Goya cool, Music. Ah, oh, welcome to Goya. This is Goya's office. It's messy as usual. Say hello, Flick. Hello, Flick. And there's Nick, because he does lots of work. And there's Malik, who's, who's driving the van for us. Malik's picking up the records. <laughs> He's going to ask me for money now, but I'm going to pay him later. <laughs> that's no good. No, that's always good. It's always good. <laughs> this is just all the stock. You know, we've been involved with music in lots of different ways, involved with clubs, DJing, producing for um, many years now. So, no, we wanted to do music that, you know, had, for us had meaning and had some, you know, that was, we thought was valid. And that's that's the music we uh, try, to, uh, try to develop and try to work with. You can't make the beautiful music and feel as happy about your music as you did when it didn't matter, when the money didn't matter. Yeah, if we were doing it for money, we'd have probably released trance music, but I don't think I could really do that. It doesn't interest me. You know, I might as well sell tins of beans if I was going to do that, really. Goya Music has produced My History, which is considered as the first broken beat record. When I heard My History by IG Culture, New Sector Movements, for me it was just IG's got a new track and it was different, you know, the rhythmically it was different, it had a new energy, a new feeling to it. And to me that was the first Broken Beat song. I remember IG had been, he brought in some uh, sort of instrumental hip hop demos that he'd been working on. And um, I remember me and Orin speaking with him and saying, I was saying to him to make, it, make the records faster. I decided that I was gonna do music at a certain tempo and I was gonna just everything I do is gonna be at that tempo and you know it's not gonna be four to the floor because I said no I'm not doing house music and he said he didn't want to make house music we said no we didn't want to release it as house music but to just to pitch it pitch up what he was doing you know rather than it being like a hip-hop tempo to make it more of a of a dance floor tempo I've got a probably give Mike Slocum props because he gave me the opportunity to do this music. He, he, he basically said, okay, um, I know I know about you, IG, I know where you're coming from. Here's a grant, go away and do some stuff. I think he went away and he came back with three demos and I think, although we didn't put it out till later, I think one of them was Futuristic Dancer and I think one of them was a rough demo of my history. He said, wow, okay, I want, to re I want to release this on my label. In this year of grace, 2006, during the last weekend in August, the magneto waves were about to radiate over London during the famous Notting Hill Carnival. Norman Jay, famous British DJ ennobled by the Queen, is a model for many English DJs. <laughs> Bring through the next generation. It's the we Good are. Times Roadshow. Yeah, you know? they have to come with their own crowds. I've got families, generations. I've got dads there. They're our age. They come with their kids. And their kids are grown up. So even from their kids are small, Generations of family here. It's just wicked. <laughs> so when you retire, you're gonna leave us leave us a piece for down the road. Yeah. <laughs> Go up. Yeah. So you got some surprises tomorrow. Yeah, I'll be scaring a few people. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Club. 
shops, I was here. You know, before I was in festivals, I was here. Seeing the service. You know what I mean? If it wasn't for this shit, I wouldn't have been a DJ. This, shit. this gave me my first start. Like you, you know, we're healing boys. You know what I mean? Healing man. Foundation. Yeah. Kids. DIY. <laughs> do it yourself. It's equally as well, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, do it yourself. No choice. No other choice. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you look No choice. This is the only an original street party. It's not a Greenfield Festival. It's not a club. It's a street party. In carnival, in the true sense, it's celebration. And, you know, as the sons and daughters of slaves, we celebrate in the street. important thing about Broken Beat is that it's really what goes into it. Musically, it's got the le lineage, the, the heritage of jazz and soul, and, and also reggae as well. You know, sound system culture, which is a massive part of, of, of living in London. As the carnival is going full swing, the Broken Beat community spreads out all its energy in order to prepare the co-op party, a major event that allows all world enthusiasts to get together and celebrate the last Broken Vibes. Two key issues for me is always seven o'clock shut. The most important one, mm -hmm. you've done this many years, haven't you? Yeah, a few years. Though. Yeah, it's around you communicating with the people yeah. if there's an issue. You always get a better response if you're on the mic to tell them, come on, cool down, we need to get an ambulance or something, yeah. rather than me standing there going, I'm a police officer, you will move. Yeah? Don't work. So I'm just looking for your cooperation over the two days. The only problem is if you come to me, nobody else, and I'll, I'll get it sorted. There's always trouble with the police, isn't it, Mark? Yeah. <laughs> but the police coming straight from Labrador Grove and Harlem. <laughs> they want to know that no one's selling drinks illegally. They want to know that everyone's going to move away. Like, when 7 o'clock comes, they don't want the sound system to be here. church and get your blessing. There's just pure energy down there. It was a brainchild of Diga, 
uh, IG Culture, Phil Asher, the crew from Bugs in the Attic, Afternoon, Daz IQ, Mark Force, everybody had elements into the birth of this. But then there will only be one car because it is built on that vibe and you've got kind of all these different factors within co-op you've got um the, the music makers you know no one else can really say that they've got all the music makers in one spot and one place you know it's okay these are the guys that created it from the bugs in attic guys iq you know or in all of them lot ig Try my best to keep the cult alive. It's just I will give blood. <laughs> go there with some dub plates or some tunes that you've just made like two hours before. <laughs> you know, you burn it onto a CD and you go straight to the co-op and play it and it's a testing ground. The essence of music, the pure essence of the music. Yeah, it's all about dancing, baby. No demons, no vampires. Respect. <laughs> link to back in the day you know back in the day there were some serious parties so when you when you when you see the co-op it's kind of like you've got some old school ethics and you've got some now vibes and hopefully we're trying to reach out towards the future so extend their worldwide conquest, the broken beat makers launched a record invasion. Producers in America, okay, they have their formula and they have their money backing their formula and the business backing the formula so they're successful. Where the Americans get it really right is that they kind of take a lot of the ideas from the street scenes, the street cultures, the dance music culture from around the world, including the UK, and then they add songs on top. In America with black music they're very um, organized at bringing the parts and making it fit and then making it into a commercial thing. We get to a level with less, you know, less money, less backing, less promotion. IG is a man of much kind of depth and, and he's been around for a long time and he's regarded by a lot of the people on that scene as one of the godfathers, one of the daddies. And I think to actually, to be honest with you, I think that IG is up there with like, you know, Timberland. If some American producers are smart, then they're gonna look in this area and say, okay, there's some ideas we can take from that to put into our music. And I'm sure some of them do. All this stuff that's happening now, I, I thought of that already. Uh, I was, I was, You're a fucking genius, mate. Yeah, I've got loads of wicked ideas. <laughs> People that make the Broken Beat are pretty much really not messing around in regards to they're not interested in kind of mainstream pop values. I don't want to be famous. <laughs> Do you want to be famous? In regards to how you should look, how you should talk, who you should be nice to, they're not interested in all that. They just want to make music. I'm famous already, no. bro. That's the thing. Yeah. That's okay. I'm famous. Tell me, can you feel the vibe? Yeah, tell me, tell me, can you feel the vibe? Uh, tell me. 
these days, where do you get all your hot tunes? You have to go to co-op, you know, or you have to listen to internet radio stations. There's not a lot of outlets for independent labels to get their music out there. You know, there's some specialised radio shows and obviously club DJs and specialist shops. When it's being played in the club, people hear it and they're aware of it and it has hype. Um, then it's played on the radio and then there's reviews about it and then you get a, a single to promote album, you know. Final singles have always been there to promote the album. We usually move on and do like a promo run. Um, these, we pr maybe press 200, 300 copies of. Um, we give these out to DJs, maybe some radio people, press, other distributors and export companies, and just generally try and get um, a feeling for how the record's gonna sell, what the reaction is to the records, and to help us gauge how many we should press for the finished copies. You know, today we are living in a in a time where you know marketing and promoting and spending a lot of money on on pushing music is so important, not just in music, in every industry. You know, Mr. Wazo Flatbeat was number one and it's an amazing record. But it tied in with the power of Levi's marketing. Uh, a great video and all the forces combined for an underground record credible to become number one. You have to spend money if you want to make money or get something sort of known about. Sure there's there's you know there's luck involved in this. And we're a scene and we're, and we're an established movement and we've been working for so long uh, working out our credibility that there isn't just going to be a, a moment when the stars align and we can't all kind of run around hoping that someone somewhere is going to see us and give us a break, and give us an advert, or give us, you know, you have to create it yourself and it's a hard musical world out there where everyone is making music, everyone can make a video, everyone can get on YouTube, everyone can get on MySpace, we're all the same now. Having the right record at the right time, that's going to sell well, you know, it can happen also. But it hasn't happened so far on a kind of mass scale, which is a bit of a shame because, like I say, the, the music's quite powerful that these guys are doing. The most commercially viable thing that Broken Beat has um, given to us is Bugs in the Attic. You know, they've signed a major record deal, um, they've got an album out, they're being reviewed in the broadsheets, they're being reviewed in the dance magazines, um, and, you know, they're making videos. for producers and DJs and um, we all produce individually and then we come collectively as Bugs and Yay. When we first started, to me, um, Seiji was like this really, you know, talented, progressive, like electronic producer. Um, Daz was into like hip hop and an R&B and that sort of side of things, and although he was working on drum and bass and that, but ultimately he was a brilliant engineer. I was into like vocal sort of house sort of stuff. Alex and um, g were both programming drum and bass as well. It's, it is almost like a football team. The magneto waves carried on to irradiate the planet. From Berlin with the collective Jazzanova from Sonar Collective Label. To Tokyo with the Kyoto Jazz Massive. New bases of broken beat started resonating. We met like uh, maybe 15 years ago. Maybe 20, 25, 30. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> so actually like, like quite a long time ago in a club here in Berlin where some of us were performing live and some of us were performing as DJs. And yeah, the club was called Delicious Donuts. Our music is maybe not easy to um, put in one shelf because it's um, it has a wide range of influences. Actually, we started basically with hip hop and then we were going to soul and jazz and funk, then came Afro Brazil. Yeah, and so we started to search for jazz and hip hop samples and, and also and funk samples to take a look just a little bit behind the scene, you know. Every music you hear now 
it was done before so actually there's nothing new it's only just the packaging how you uh, how you present it to people just in the crowd rock you can find something Jazz beats, but the other side is much more interesting. So jazz is very syncopated in a way, and uh, you have in jazz this African influences at a special point of time back in history. So it was quite normal to play just around with the rhythms. Rhythmic um, structure or textures have a very important role for us because it comes from the development. We started with hip hop, where drums always played an uh, important role, maybe where the loudest part of the production. Even later in, in, in house music or club music, the straight forward to the floor bass drum or something is also the most significant um, thing in the music. And we uh, tried to play around with changing it. We started maybe, let's say, um, with the beat and um, moved the, the uh, accent maybe back or forth to make the rhythm like a melody. Japanese producer always respect broken beats from London. They gave us so many inspiration, but we try to make something different from UK broken beats. We Japanese producer featuring so many jazz musicians. So I think Japanese broken beats featuring you know improvisation, but London's broken beats more DJ's music. When I make music as a Kyoto Jazz Machine, of course I have influence from broken beat, but on the other hand, we have influence from Japanese 70s fusion. I found a kind of similarity, you know, drum pattern, also chords. That's why I try to mix jazz and broken beat. Japanese customer listen to broken beat as crossover music. People couldn't recognize which is broken beat, which is new jazz, because we Japanese mix everything. To the rhythm of magneto waves, the different broken beat communities throughout the world meet together and collaborate with each other. There's a need for the people that make the music to be businessmen, to be the people that actually create organizations and relationships between different people in different countries. And that's what's happening in Broken Beat. It's more about little pockets of resistance in every country. There'll be a club and a little label and someone that's interested, not just in Broken Beat, but just in playing lots of different music from different areas together. I went to London so many times for these 15 years. Sometimes recording, DJ gigs, just holiday. So I have so many friends in London. Also, I'm promoter in Japan, so I invite so many DJs from London. All from the from the Bugs the Attic uh, crew, uh, IG Culture, Digo from For Hero, uh, Mark Mack. Uh, nearly everyone has been here and uh, has been a, a part of our um, of our party. We have a worldwide network before internet culture because basically. We are collector of jazz music. 
I was gonna meet the guys when they are just around to come by for, for DJ gigs and they come just a little bit earlier. They, they also came in the studio and just have a... Uh, she had just to talk about equipment or just music, listen to 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 new stuff. I think it's more just a kind of a friendship. Jazanova is really famous, but sometimes DJ is not famous. But still, we are really good friends as a record collector. So we exchange our knowledge. Sometimes we invite foreign DJs to Japan. Sometimes they invite me to their country. This is the co-op and we're gonna have a massive party tonight. Understand? Yeah. Happy New Year! Yeah! Come on, the pure goodness and good vibes for 2007. Did you know this one sing along? Happy days. Oh. When you know it's going your way. Sun and Sound is something that is just purely based on a feeling and a vibe and an energy. It's not about trying to fake it, it's not trying to copy anyone else. It's a celebration of music and our influences and taking them forward to the future with the next generation. Definitely has an honest purity about it that I wish, I hope doesn't, it doesn't lose. I don't see many magazines with pages dedicated to Broken Beat, so maybe it's not fully accepted as a, a whole genre yet, but I think it will be. I think that's where everything's going anyway. When you know it's going your way. Like most creative people, they're ahead of their time. Maybe that what they're doing now is not ready to be accepted now. But in a few years, the legacy they leave will be rich. When the Magneto ended its mission, one of its loyal servants, Afronaut, took it back to put it undercover in the mothership, waiting for new adventures. Magneto pyramid. I see in here, we got like, we got, when everyone goes on road, like different territories or whatever go, whatever country they go to, we bring back notes and we put in the, we put in a Magneto pot. And then, but Magneto's not just about money. This is, this is our next little run is, this is called. This is money Magneto. There you go. Visualize yourself as a human mag magnet. It's a way of thinking, it's basically a positive mental attitude. And it's basically thinking yourself as a magnet, track, attracting positive from the universe. When you're an artist and you're making music, especially when you're making underground music, you'll find there's a lot of time you ain't got money, you know what I mean? So it's quite easy to um to be, yeah, be, become focused on the negative rather than you know, like but, 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 yeah, you kind, of, you, you kind of think sometimes, you think, why am I fucking doing this shit? You know, like, well, what's the point of me sitting there making this music? Is anyone listening to it? You know what I mean? I'm, I'm not making no money. And you can kind of get, you kind of can get tied up in all the negativity. So what all us lot started doing is rather when, when we get into that frame of mind, I mean, if Wheeler comes in and he's screwing about stuff, all I've got to say to him is Magneto. And that's it. Change it around, innit? Yeah. <laughs> Ten years in the making, here we are. Still broke and beat. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is Mr. Heinz. <laughs> That's the Heinz factory there. <laughs> is the guy who give you the money after? No, he don't no. give us no money. He's just grief. He's for love. <laughs> <laughs> and he's a hoe. They're <laughs> <laughs> my bitches. <laughs> yeah, man. Can I big up to man like Mike Goya? He'd be downstairs. <laughs> 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 
Look at this afro man, alright, there's man. Give him a perfect specimen of afro growth. <laughs> hey, look at I found. Put that some boots. Alex, 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 Alex,